So uh, obviously it's been one week since the free agency started and we have big news for the East because everyone went to the West. Mm. Uh, Gordon Hayward is now, a, well not now, but he will be a Boston, he'll be a Celtic. Mm -hmm. He'll join the uh, Isaiah Thomas, Al Horford and Brad Stevens in Boston. And there's also news about Kelly Olynyk leaving Boston. Uh, he's going to Miami Heat, so there's more room for cap space uh, probably there. But um, my question is for today, does Gordon Hayward going to Boston make them a contender in the East? Because they, they were technically a, the second best team in the East already. But can they keep up and be uh, right below Cleveland? Because Cleveland's here, mm -hmm. and the Boston's here. <laughs> And the, the and everyone, that, everyone, everyone else is at the bottom, okay. yeah. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think Boston is still or a, a contender in the East? Um, they've always been a contender. This is, I don't think this was a one-year kind of jump that they're expecting. The, um, you know, Boston is very strategic in terms of their moves. That's why they've been very careful in terms of trading their draft pick or making use of their draft pick and their really good contracts that they have. They have a really good contract with Jay Crowder. They had a really good contract with A.V. Bradley. And they had really good contracts other than, uh, other than Al Horford. And Isaiah soon is going to get paid as well, right? So they still have really good contracts. So they're very careful about it because this is not a one-year kind of thing that, oh, they want to surpass Cleveland by next year. No, this is a very a calculated move that they're doing right now. They know that LeBron James' window is closing soon. He's not going to be this good for the next three or four years. I don't think... Cleveland's going to be that good for the next three or four years. And they're just basically saying, hey, we're going to gather enough assets, but we're not going to, we're going to, we're going to gather enough talent, but we're not going to lose our future assets enough to contend in the East because it only takes an injury. It, let's say next year, they're technically already the second best team right now in the, NBA, in, in the East. In the East. And Not nothing even competes close. Maybe rap, the Raptors, maybe, depending on what they do. But all the people that have gone to the West have made East a lot, even a lot, you know, easier than it already was. So they're already the second best team in terms of what they're doing right now is saying, we're going to gather enough talents, but we're not going to give up any, anything, anyone valuable. They kept their third pick. They kept most of their players right now. They only lost, what, Kelly Olenek. Kelly Olenek. Compared to getting Gordon here. And that's Amir a big Johnson. difference. That's, well, that's not but bad. Two, yeah, two role players compared to an all-star. That's different, right? You, as long as you get the best player, you get the best deal in a sense, right? So this is more of a calculation because if, let's say, this coming playoff year, they face Cleveland, and let's say they, they got an injury to LeBron. Like, I'm not saying he could, like, not going to would, but I'm saying that one injury can, can lead them to a finals just next year. If, if so LeBron, you're hoping like, on an injury. No, I'm saying that... I'm just saying that a lot of teams have lost in the, in, in the playoff because of an injury. Let's like mm -hmm. Kawhi. See mm -hmm. what happened with Kawhi Leonard. See what uh, a few years ago happened with injuries with a couple of players. Like um, Curry had an injury the year before, and that's why they, you know it's um, it's not an excuse, but they could. I think they could have won that. You know they could have had a three peat, or they could have not even had Durant if they won that championship. If Draymond didn't get in, you know Draymond or Boga didn't get injured or Steph Curry didn't get injured. So that's a lot of things that can happen in the playoffs, and injuries the main reason why a lot of teams are not. And so, what I think about this Gordon Hayward move is that Boston might just have, in my, in my opinion, they only have like a one-year chance. Because just because once, if they don't ever, if they don't win a championship this year, they have a lot of contracts to uh, move or either try to re-sign. Because, you know, Avery Bradley's going to be up, um, Jay Crowder's going to be up, um, someone else. But either way, they, they, might, they, might, they might make moves or not re-sign them, but... It's just that I feel like that window is it's open for now until the end of the season, until they win a probably be Cleveland because Cleveland's obviously all in the way of every single Eastern team in the East. So who? Because they they're losing, like you said, they're losing two role players. They're losing Amir and Kelly Olynyk. Uh, Kelly Olynyk. So who do you think they're targeting now? And I know there's rumors, but who is the next piece that they should be acquiring um, currently? No, they, they are they are they are targeting Mark Gasol right now, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a really really um not really, but it's it's a good move to do because right now, as as much as you know, uh, you see how good of a fit they have in terms of the players that they have. They're too small, like they can't um, they don't have rim protection, and I think Gasol is gonna give that kind of uh, rim protection to them and a, a, even an uh, additional playmaker 
right? Because if you think about it, Isaiah Thomas is a great scorer, but he's not the you know he's not the playmaker really in the team. It's Al Horford. So imagine having Al Horford playing the four, and you have Gasol playing the, uh, the five. You have two good playmakers that can run the you know two bigs that can uh, make plays make for them, plays, yeah. and you can have Isaiah focus on what he does best, which is scoring, as well as Gordon Hayward coming off you know off balls, which is what he's been really good at. And you have a player like Jason uh, Tatum, which is. You know, if you've seen him in the summer league, the, man. Oh, man. He's, he's pretty he's good. good. He's good. Really I was good. telling people before that this was such a good move when they got the third pick because no one else was going to see this coming. I think if if the Sixers drafted Jason Tatum, he would have been the rookie of the year just because of how much opportunity, how good of a scorer he is. He's the best shooter of, from the draft. And if you see him play, man, like he's NBA ready in terms of, you know, his pull-up game is smooth. His driving lane, he has handles. He can shoot everything. So they, you can have him and Jalen Brown off the bench. You have Crowder still, and you, I don't know who they're going to, I think they might have to give up Crowder and Bradley their contract just to get Gasol, but that's perfect for them because they can have Isaiah, Hayward, Tatum, and, and Jalen Brown, Horford, and Gasol. That's a perfect team to contend against the 